Hey everyone, welcome in. Stage five is finally upon us as the first day of group matches are tomorrow. In this episode, we are bringing you a brand new power rankings. We actually haven't done one of these since before stage four. So it's been a little while in that time span. We have had teams that have moved up quite a bit. We have had some teams that have taken a bit of a slide, but we're gonna go through. We are going to cover that all today. And without further ado, let's go ahead. And let's get right into it with our first squad. Number 12 in our power rankings are the London Royal Ravens. So you can see up at the top, I have them down one spot from where they were before. Look at through their map records, hard point, SND, control. They just don't really have a game mode that they can rely on. And if you look at recent matches, stage four was super cruel to them. The only team that they beat was LAG. That was the very last match that they had in stage four. For group play and then they got bounced in the very first round by Seattle this was a squad that at the end of stage three was winning quite a few of their matches they actually even eliminated Minnesota from that stage three major in a map that was pretty one-sided I mean they looked really good in that matchup and then they go ahead they get rid of Zed, Zed and Zaptius they bring in Afro and Alex and it just hasn't worked out I did feel like they had something solid there. Then they made another move, and now they find themselves at number 12 in our power rankings. Moving along, at number 11, we have the other squad that really didn't have a great stage five, LAG. They were able to beat LA Thieves in the first round of the stage four major, but then got smoked by Florida. And of course, before that, they had five straight losses in the stage four group play. The only reason why I have them ahead of London, even though they lost London, is because they did beat LA Thieves, and that was in the major, so that has to count for something. But overall record, eight and 20 map record. I mean, you look throughout their different mode ranks. SND is the mode that they kind of fall back on, but even with that, the rumors as of late with mental being subbed in is that things are not going well for them. There was just a rumor the other day that they were 0-8 map count to the LAG Academy squad. So maybe there's some rough beginnings here. We'll see how it ends up playing out. But I don't have a ton of faith in LAG at the moment, which brings us to our 10th ranked squad, the Paris Legion. And if you look over on the right, this is a squad that has started to gain at least a little bit of ground. I have them up two spots from number 12 at the beginning of stage four. Again, hard point SD control 10th, 11th, 11th. They're not really that great at any of these game modes, which entering any match, it's hard to say, okay, they're going to end up winning here just because they don't have anything that they can fall back on. But as you look at their recent matches, they were able to get a win against Seattle. They were able to get a win against LA Thieves. And a lot of their losses, even to teams like Optic, Minnesota, Atlanta, they're still taking maps. So that's a little bit different than what you could say for the two squads that are under them. But I think that there's a clear distinction between the bottom three teams and the middle chunk of teams that comes next, which brings us to team number nine, the LA Thieves. So I have them down three positions from the start of stage four. Overall, they're 14 and 17 map record. You can look up and down their ranks. A lot of those ranks come from earlier in the year when they were a bit more dominant in the respawns, but the big point here, bottom left-hand side of this graphic, you now have John and Draza running the SMGs. If you look at their recent matches, obviously things have not gone well for them. They did almost take that map five against LAG and the map five against Minnesota, but rumor has it, if you saw that clip with Abizi, that right now they're just not playing very well at all. Abizi said they took care of them basically with ease. So we'll see what happens here with LA Thieves, but this is a new roster. Who knows how much time it'll take for them to actually get some sort of team chemistry and what they're trying to do on the map down. So we'll see what happens. But for now, we have them at number eight, which you could flip back and forth. I think these other two squads are pretty close. But at number eight, I have the Seattle Surge, which are up three spots from number 11 the last time that I did these power rankings. And a lot of it is because they've been playing much better as of late of course their record their CDL points their ranks in each of the modes don't really show it but 
They are getting wins against Paris, against teams like London. They did get that big win over Optic. Now, you still have them losing to teams like Paris and Minnesota, but that's to be expected. But as of late, especially on LAN, when it got to LAN, you started to see that, okay, maybe this Seattle squad does have a bit of promise. We'll see if that continues throughout stage five. Now, of course, the group play matches are back online, so I don't think that's going to favor the way that they like to play the game. But if they're able to make it to the weekend, when you have fans in attendance at stage five major, I think that can only benefit them throughout the entirety of stage five. So I'm excited to see what Seattle can do moving forward, even though they have no shot at making it to champs, obviously, which brings us to our seventh rank squad the Florida Mutineers. If you're looking at Florida, obviously they didn't have the best land performance. I think heading into the stage four major, a lot of teams were picking Florida to make quite a bit of a run here. Nobody expected them to be like in winner's finals or loser's finals or anything like that, but we thought with the way that they played throughout stage four group play that they would be able to make a bit of a run, but this is down two spots from, from where I had them at the beginning of stage four. Not necessarily because of how they played, but how some other squads did step up over the course of the last month or so. There were some rumors that TJ could have potentially went to Florida and swapped out Havoc. I think that would have made them a much better squad as Havoc does seem to be a bit of a weak link here. But you look at their recent matches, they lost to an NYSL squad that didn't have a seam in the last major. They did get that win over LAG, but before that it was kind of up and down, right? Lost to Dallas, beat LAG, lost to NYSL, beat London. So they're beating squads that are underneath them. They just haven't been able to take care of business with the squads that are a bit above them. But when you have awakening and skies on your team, anything can happen. So for right now, I have Florida rounding out my bottom six, but this is still a scary squad and one that if I have them in like the first round of a major, I'm not sure I'm feeling all that comfortable just because they do have the potential to play absolutely lights out. Move on to our sixth rank squad, which is the Minnesota Rocker. I have them up from number eight, where I had them at the beginning of stage four. And a lot of it has to do with how they've been playing as of late with Standy on the squad. Now, there is that rumor that Priesta and Attach have swapped roles. So we'll see how that works out. Attach, as of late, has not been playing as well as he did throughout the first few stages. So that could have a bit to do with it. But if you look at their recent matches, the only team that they lost to throughout stage four they lost twice to optic and they lost twice to atlanta phase so when you put things into perspective gotta win over nysl beat la thieves beat seattle they do have some really good wins throughout that stage four they just haven't been able to get over the hump with optic or atlanta and that's kind of to be expected but they're super good at control so if they're able to win either map one or map two and you partner that with a with a third map win that's two maps and then all you have to do is get a hard point or an s and d win over the course of map four and five and that's where they have been successful as of late so minnesota up to number six we move on to the fifth rank squad which is Optic, Chicago down one spot. I did have them at number four, but with the run that Dallas made, Dallas has kind of leapfrogged them a bit. Look at their recent matches. They're beating teams that you'd expect them to beat. Beat Minnesota, Seattle, LA Thieves, squads of that nature, but they haven't been able to get over Dallas, for instance. And then anytime they play in Atlanta or an NYSL or a Toronto, they do seem to struggle. So I'm waiting for them to make that next jump. They just haven't quite been able to do so yet. I do think that it'll come. But for right now, they seem like they're kind of stuck where they're at, as weird as that is to say. I mean, they're playing well. They have good days. They have really good days, but then they have days where they just don't show up. And I feel like at this point in time, we know who Optic is. Scump has been their most consistent player. Formal has not lived up to expectations. You can say the same exact thing for Envoy. Dashy is super inconsistent. He'll come out one map and he'll look like an absolute goat. And then he'll turn around and he won't be anywhere to be found on the map. 
So when I look at this squad, I just feel like they are who they are, and I would be shocked if they made a run in Stage 5 Major or if they're able to make a run in Champs. I just don't see it at this point in time. So at number 5, I have Optic Chicago, which brings me to number 4, which you could argue this could be a little bit different, but I do want to see it more before I'm convinced to move Dallas up any further. So I did have Dallas at number seven. They were in quite a bit of turmoil before they brought on Vivid. Now that they've brought in Vivid, seems like things are clicking and Shotzi and Vivid are playing, are, are pairing well together. So I have them up three spots up to number four. Obviously, if you look at their recent matches, wins over Toronto, Optic, NYSL, Optic again, they do have that loss against Toronto, but the most impressive thing that we've seen recently out of Dallas is the fact that they almost won stage four major. They were one map away, came all the way down to map nine before they lost in that SND to Atlanta. So had it been for just recent performances, I think they would be higher, but I just want to see it a bit more often before I, uh, again, start to move them up into the number three, number two, somewhere in that range. So just show me again, but I do have a ton of confidence in Dallas right now. So Dallas is my biggest mover in my power ranking. Some would argue that they should be even a little bit higher. As we look at number three, we have the Toronto Ultra, which is exactly where I had them before stage four started. You can look up and across the different ranks, Hardpoint ranked fifth, S&D second, Control second. They are an unbelievable control squad. And when you partner that with the fact that they are really good at S&D, and oh, by the way, they have two of the best ARs in the game in Cami and Insight. This is a squad that is unbelievably tough to deal with. They did lose to Dallas they did lose to Atlanta in the last stage four major but before that in group play wins over Dallas NYSL LAG London they just absolutely took care of business they deserved the spot that they had in that stage four major but when it came to land they weren't pro quite performing at the same level that they were online. We'll see how that goes over the course of the next stage, but I still have a ton of confidence in Toronto. I think on any given day, they can beat any given squad outside of maybe Atlanta. They can give them a run for their money. I'm not quite sure if they can beat them, but for right now, I've got Toronto at three. One that might be a bit of a head scratcher is I still have NYSL at two, but when they played their last major, they didn't have a seam, and a seam does so much for them on the map. So, I'm kind of just giving them a pass, to be completely honest. I feel like the performance that they had in the Stage 4 Major, sure, it was what it was. It wasn't probably what it would have been had a seam been there, but I just don't want to hold it against them, the fact that somebody that does so much for them on the map in each and every game mode wasn't there. So you take out Scum from Optic, they're probably not going to play the same. You take out Standy from Minnesota or you take out Shotzi from Dallas. I mean, they're just, they were missing one of their integral parts. So I'm not going to hold it against them. We all know when it comes to hard point, they're absolutely nasty. Number two overall hard point rank. And of course, a lot of that has to do with what Hydra has brought to this squad. You can look at their recent matches. They did lose against Dallas. They did lose that first round to Minnesota. But again, they weren't at full strength. I expect this to be much different heading into the Stage 5 Major. And oh boy, I cannot wait to see Clayster playing on Saturday and Sunday if they make it there with a live crowd in attendance. We all know how much Clay feeds off of that crowd. But moving on, our number one squad, as it has been the majority of the year, I think all except for one of these power rankings, I've had Atlanta at number one. And you look at the recent matches, I mean, they're just taking care of business, right? Beat Dallas, even though it did go to a map nine in the grand finals, they still clutched up and were able to get that victory. Beat Toronto, beat Minnesota twice, LA Dave, Seattle. I mean, they're just taking care of business. The match against Dallas was really the only match that got a little bit iffy towards the end. But look at this record, 30 and four. They've lost four series all year long. Their map count is 105 and 43. And throughout the course of the year, we have seen each one of these individual game modes go up to 
first place. They are the number one hard point, number one SND, number one control squad. I mean, where are the holes in their game? If you're thinking, okay, we're going to beat Atlanta, how are you going to do it? I don't know. They're just absolutely lights out. They have the best roster that there is in the CDL. And in fact, they might even have the best roster that you could create. Like if you could take somebody off of this squad and swap them out, maybe you put Cami in there or Insight or Clay or something like that. But I'm not even sure how much better those moves would make this roster. I just feel like they have the four best players at their position right now. And it's just absolutely lights out. So good luck to the rest of the CDL as it enters stage five and as we get into champs because Atlanta is looking unbelievable at this point in time. But with that, that's my power rankings. Down in the comments below, let me know. Do you agree, disagree? Would you move some squads around? Would you put Dallas higher? Would you move LA Thieves up a bit? Where are you feeling with that? So comments, let me know down below. I love the interaction. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave a like as it helps out the channel. And with that, thank you guys so much. We will see you in the next upload.